Hello, welcome to Confessions of a Frustrated Game Master. I am Robert the Narrator, and thank you for joining me for another episode of Confessions. Well, this episode of Confessions, I thought I would make a character for the Cypher System role-playing game. I'm using Cypher System right now for my Vampire Nations uh, setting, uh, a little limited time campaign that I was running. It's a, a fantasy world with vampires. And I started off the whole idea of this crazy world just thinking that uh, wouldn't it be cool if all of the PCs were vampires. And one strange thing, thing about the vampires in this world is when they drink the blood of a fantasy creature, they temporarily... Uh, get the, uh, the, the magical powers of those creatures. So it's, it's the craziest idea. That's all I had. And I really built from there. And I thought Cypher System would be perfect for that. And what I wanted to do is go ahead, uh, this episode and make a character for Cypher System to show you how it works. Now, if you're not familiar with Cypher, Cypher System, it's by Monty Cook Games. It is the system that powers their Numenera. A uh, role playing game. And so it's kind of a generic setting. The cipher system is and you can do fantasy, science fiction, supers, horror, modern, uh, sci fi. If I didn't say sci fi, I did say sci fi. Um, but anyway, so it's, it's a gen generic system and that's the system that I'm using for my vampire nations, um, setting. And it's really a super straightforward system. That's what I like about it. It uses a D20. And the core task resolution mechanic, I'll tell you really quickly, is when you want to do something in the cipher system, uh, if you're going up against an um, NPC or uh, some type of inanimate obstacle, everything in the game has a uh, difficulty level of 1 to 10, very, very straightforward. And when you want to overcome that obstacle or attack an NPC... Um, you go against that difficulty. Now, NPCs have levels from 1 to 10. So if you were attacking an NPC, the way it works is the di your target number is your the difficulty level times 3. So if you were trying to attack a level 5 NPC, your target number would be 15. You would roll your d20. There's nothing that you add to it, and you just take what you rolled. Super simple, super straightforward. I love, love, love the cipher system. There are some other mechanics I'll get into later as part of the character creation process, but I just wanted to tell you about the, the basic core mechanic. It couldn't be simpler. Now, when you're constructing a character in the cipher system, essentially what they tell you to do is to answer kind of some some questions you build your character by building a sentence basically what you do is you you take your character's name and you kind of fill in the blanks of it's kind of like a mad libs your character your character's name is an adjective noun who verbs now the adjective noun and verb of the sentence has mechanics related to it. And so when you're building your character, you choose what that adjective, noun, and verb are, and that gives you uh, the things that makes your character uh, who they are. So I'm going to go ahead and start the process. So what am I going to call my character? My character uh, in this, this Vampire Nations game, his name is going to be Creed with a K. So his name is Creed. Okay, so I'll write that on the character sheet. So Creed is an adjective noun who verbs. Now the adjective part of the sentence is what they call a descriptor. And descriptor tells you what is unique about your character. And descriptors are uh, things like uh, your character being appealing or brash or driven or impulsive. And something that I have done with my Vampire Nations game, there are, I would say, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, one, two, three. There has to be 50 or so different descriptors for the game. But what I decided to do with my Vampire Nations game is there are, uh, 
10 vampire tribes. And what I decided to do is I decided to take some descriptors from the 50 or so descriptors in the game and apply one of those descriptors to a tribe. So when you selected what tribe your vampire character was from, you were also selecting their descriptor. And uh, one of the players in my game asked me, so are you saying that all members of the tribe are this descriptor? And I'm, I say, no, no, no. Not all members of the tribe are uh, <laughs> are that descriptor, but you are. And uh, the, the idea is that you are an exemplar of your tribe, uh, so you definitely have these traits. And I have uh, the list of tribes written here. So there are 10 tribes. You have uh, the Bravi, and I use the appealing descriptor for the Bravi. The Dark Heart are cruel the Drift are mystical. The Doom Walkers are doomed. Surprise there. The Ernert are strong. The Lonos are exiled. The Razor are vengeful. The Sideal are stealthy. The Twist are weird. And the Vincent are tough. So they, I'm not obviously using all of the descriptors in the game, but I think these descriptors are the ones that kind of give the setting flavor. You know, you have cruel, mystical, doomed, exiled, vengeful, stealthy, weird. So these descriptors, like I say, they kind of add a little oomph to the setting. So Creed, I think uh, none of the players in my game uh, chose the Lonos. So the Lonos are the tribe that have been exiled. So I'm going to say Creed is an exiled or Lonos. And before I move on to, uh, so that's the adjective in your sentence. Creed is an exiled, um, noun who verbs, I'm going to go ahead and look up what the ex exiled descriptor does or uh, what what are the mechanics behind the descriptor. So here are the character uh, descriptors right here. And they're in alphabetical order and exiled is right here. There you are. So exiled. It says here for exiled that you have walked a long and lonely road, leaving your home and your life behind. You might have committed a heinous crime, something so awful that your people forced you out. And if you dare return, you face death. You might have been accused of a crime you didn't commit and now must pay the price of someone else's wicked deed. Your exile might be the result of a social gaffe. Perhaps you shamed your family or a friend, or you embarrassed yourself in front of your peers and authority or someone you respect. Whatever the reason, you have left your old life behind and now strive to make a new one. You probably have a memento from your past, an old picture, a locket from a few strands, um, with a few strands of hair inside, or a lighter given to you by someone important. You keep the object close at hand and pull it out to help you remember better times. Uh, you gain the following characteristics. So um, that is what the exile uh, says. Of course, uh, I guess you won't be having a lighter uh, because uh, this is a, a fantasy um, setting, but Creed, yeah, is, is exiled. And when I came up with the tribes and the setting, I did not hash out all of the minute details of the setting. What I did was I came up with some of the frameworks and what, what, what I wanted to do with the setting is something I've never done before. Let the players fill in all of the details of the setting and their characters and the tribes that they chose. Now, as I said, no one chose the Lonos, uh, the exiled tribe. So I haven't really figured out why the Lonos were ex exiled from the other tribes. I haven't figured that out, uh, but that's neither here nor there uh, for this particular situation. So what you get as an uh, an exiled or a Lonos character 
if you look at the character sheet here, uh, you notice that the uh, characters have three uh, stats, might, speed, and intellect. And you use those to lower target numbers, and I'll explain that a little bit later. But these stats, might, speed, and intellect are not fixed stats. They are actually pools of points that your character can use. And for the exile, it says that um, the exile is uh, self-reliant, so they get a plus two to might. So I'm going to just write a plus two here so that I know when I get my might pool, I can uh, go ahead and add that plus two to it. And it says loner, you gain one benefit when you get help with a task from another character who is trained or specialized in that task. Okay, so I'll write that down, uh, loner. I'm sorry, it says, as a loner, you gain no benefit. Uh, no benefit when getting help with a task. And sometimes the, uh, as you can see, the descriptor will give you a drawback, um, as well as bonuses. So as a loner, Creed, um, isn't really great at accepting help, uh, from other folks. That's a drawback of being a, uh, an exiled. And it says, I get a skill. You're trained in all tasks involving sneaking. Awesome. So you go over here and of course, sneaking around would be a speed skill. Speed is kind of like agility or um, uh, yeah, agility is the best description of what the speed stat is. And so that would be a speed skill. And I would put sneaking. And this is probably uh, a good time and I'm trained in that. So uh, if you see here, uh, under the skills, you have a T, an S, and an I. And I'll go ahead and put an X under uh, T, which is trained. And essentially, the way skills work, as I mentioned, everything, every difficulty in the game or everything has either a level, level or difficulty from 1 to 10. When you are trained in a skill, that lowers the difficulty by 1. So let's just say I did have a skill in attacking um, in that example with the level five NPC, that that level five NPC would become a level four NPC. So I would only need a 12 or higher on a D20. Um, I'll roll that. And I rolled an 11, so I still failed. Yeah, my skill didn't help at all. Um, but being specialized means that you lower the difficulty by two levels. So that level five NPC would become a level three. And I would need a nine or more. Uh, on the D20. Hey, I rolled an 11 again, so that time I hit. So that's how skills uh, affect um, the game. So I'm um, trained in sneaking, and I get another skill. You're trained in all tasks involved with foraging, hunting, finding safe places to hide and rest. So that would fall under intellect. Um, and so I am trained in hunting... Makes sense for a someone who's been sent off to exile and um, finding hiding places. I'm trained in that. So that makes a lot of sense. And I also have a, another drawback here and in, in, uh, what they call an inability. And um, what it says here is living on your own for as long as you have makes you slow to trust others and acknowledge um, and awkward in social situations. The difficulty of any task involving social interactions is increased by one. So what I would do here is um, social interactions, charisma also fall un under intellect. So what I would put here is uh, social interactions, interactions, uh, inability. So if you look at the skills, get it here. You have T for trained, S uh, for specialized, and they have an I here for inability. And, and inability means 
you get uh, tasks of that type are one level more difficult. So instead of trying to punch the NPC, if I was trying to uh, socialize with the NPC, the NPC would be considered level six instead of level five because I'm being a loner. I'm really bad at social interactions. So I would check that. So now that I know when it comes to social interactions, Mike, the difficulty levels are increased by one for my character. And uh, let's see what else we have here. Uh, now, the great thing that I, one of the things that I love about the Cypher system is that as part of character creation, Cypher system asks the player to give their character some character. So as part of the descriptor, you also determine your initial link to the starting adventure. And what it says here is from the following list of options, choose, uh, it's options. Choose how you became involved in the first adventure. And it gives you four options and you can either choose it or um, you can randomly roll if you want to. And I think I'm going to go ahead and randomly roll. So I have four choices. Let me grab, oops, oh, camera being a little jumpy there. Let me grab a D4, make this official for... Uh, you know what? I'm not going to grab a D4. I'm going to go ahead and make a decision. Executive decision time, right? So I'm going to read the four choices that I have here. It says, one, the other PCs earned your trust by helping you when you were in need. You accompanied, you accompany them to repay their aid. Two, while exploring on your own, you discovered something strange. When you traveled to a settlement, the PCs were the only ones who believed in you. Um, believed you and then they accompanied you to help you deal with the problem. Or three, one of the other PCs remind you of someone you used to know, or four, you have grown weary of your isolation. Joining the other PCs gives you a chance to belong. So what I would go with, what sounds right for Creed is, while exploring on your own, you discovered something strange. When you travel to a settlement, the PCs were the only ones who believed you, and they have accompanied you to help you deal with the problem. So I would I would go with that one for Creed. So I would uh, write that down on the other side um, of the character sheet under background. And that instantaneously gives my character a reason to be adventuring with the adventuring party. I love, love, love that aspect of Cypher System. So that is everything for my adjective part of the existent, uh, the uh, the character. Uh, being exiled or Lonos, the Lonos tribe. Now, uh, the next thing is, is the, so Creed is an exiled uh, adjective noun. The noun part of the sentence is my uh, type. And type basically is character class in Cypher System. So if you go back here, uh, Cypher System has four types. You have your warrior, you have your adept, you have your explorer and you have your speaker. A warrior, of course, is the fighter type. Uh, explorer is kind of the um, ranged rogue uh, type character, uh, ra ranger rogue type character. Um, adept is kind of the spellcaster uh, type character. And speaker is kind of the charismatic uh, face type character. So what do I want... Um, Creed to be. I think I'm going to go ahead and um, even though you don't have to in the cipher system, I'm going to kind of stay with the exiled um, wilderness idea and I'm going to, you know what? No, I'm not going to go with that. I'm going to go with warrior. I'm going to, my, uh, my creed is an exi exiled warrior and I'm going to write that down here as an exiled warrior. I was going to go with the explorer, but I, that's, that's too, that's uh, probably too meta. <laughs> I'm going to go with warrior. And, um, what it says here for warrior is in fantasy, you're a warrior, fighter, swordsman, knight, barbarian, soldier, uh, Myrmidon or Valkyrie. And what, uh, the type gives you in the game, the most important thing that it gives you is your starting stat pool. Remember I said might, uh, speed, and intellect are um, 
are, are pools of points that you use in the game. And I think that I'm going to go ahead and, um, and write those down now. Yeah, I think I'm going to go with warrior. So, uh, a warrior, uh, gets a, they assign you, uh, the points for your pools based on your, uh, your type. And so a warrior starts with a 10 in might, a 10 in speed, and an eight in intellect. And then it says you get six additional points to divide among your stat pools, however you choose. So I really imagine Creed being a little more uh, fast than... um, than necessarily really strong, but also a good intellect so he can uh, pick up on his surrounding because intellect also is used for perception. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and put one in my might and from the plus two from being exiled, that brings that up to a 13. Then I'm going to put three and uh, so that's three, uh, three in my speed that brings that up to a 13. And then I'm going to put two in my intellect. So that brings that up to a 10. So I have, is that right? So I put one, three is four, five, six. So that's six points uh, that I get to divide. And uh, that's what I have in my, so I have a 13 might, a 13 speed and a 10 intellect. Then what else does warrior give me? So a uh, it says first tier warrior. So basically Cypher System has uh, six levels. They call them tiers. Uh, and at first tier, a warrior gets an effort of one. So right here above my stats, I'm going to uh, write an effort of one. Now what effort is, now this is uh, this is where the stat pools are coming in. I'll explain that to you now. So as I said, generally what you can do with the uh, Cypher system is you can just roll a D20. If you have a skill that applies, that lowers the difficulty of the tasks. But you can also do what's called spending effort. Now, as a first-tier character, you start with an effort of one. And essentially, what spending effort is, is spending pool uh, points from the appropriate pool for actions that you perform. So, for instance, if I wanted Cree to uh, knock down a door, that would be a might action. And the door would have a level of difficulty from one to 10, like everything else in the world. And what I can do is I can spend one level, I can spend levels of effort based on my effort stat. And what effort does is it allows you to spend three points from the appropriate pool to lower the difficulty of a task by the number of levels of effort that you use. So If I wanted to, I could spend three points from Creed's might to lower the difficulty of knocking that door down by one level. And your effort tells you how many times you can do that per action. So since I have an effort of one, I can only spend one level of effort per action that Creed performs. So that's how that's how the stat pools are important. And that's how effort affects the game. And also your stat pool act stat pools act as your hit points. So when you take damage, you first start taking damage from your might. Then you take it from your, when that gets to zero, you take it from your speed. When that gets to zero, you take it from your intellect. And when all of your pools are become zero, you die. And you have other um, damage track effects when a pool gets to zero as well. So that's how the stat pool and effort work. Uh, what else? So um, physical nature, you have a might edge of one and a speed edge of zero, or you have a might edge of zero and a speed edge of one. So if you uh, look at the character sheet below the stat pools, uh, you see a notation of edge and I'll tell you what edge is. So your edge in a pool reduce the cost of you spending effort. So I know it, you know, it gets a little bit, a little bit tricky. The, the mechanic is very unique uh, to Cypher system, but essentially, um, I'm, and I'm going to go ahead and put my ed one, that one, I'm going to put a one in uh, speed and a zero in might. So I have an edge of one in speed. And essentially what that means is, is when I spend my first level of um, effort, 
my edge reduces the cost of spending effort by one. So my first level of effort uh, to lower the difficulty of a speed related task would normally cost me three, but with an edge of one, it only costs me two. So that's what that means. So uh, keep it moving along. Um, you are practiced with all weapons. You can use any weapon. So uh, practiced, I'll write that down, practiced with all weapons. So as a warrior, I can use any weapon without penalty. Starting equipment, it tells me what my starting equipment is. And then I get to choose special abilities. So I get to choose four abilities described below. You can't choose the same ability more than once unless you um, uh, unless it describes otherwise. So bash increases the damage of a melee weapon. Control the field, um, the melee weapon attack uh, flex one uh, less prone damage, and then I can maneuver to a different position. Um, no, 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 overwatch. Um, let's see here. Uh, thrust, train with armor. So, control the field. This, this melee attack. Okay, so I think that I'm going to... Practice Dynama, you can wear armor for long periods of time without tiring. So I get to choose four of these first two abilities. I'm going to choose Practice in Armor. So Practice in Armor says that uh, I can wear armor for long periods of time without tiring and can compensate for slow reactions. While wearing armor, you can wear any kind of armor and reduce the speed cost. Um, then I'm going to then I'm going to choose extra edge. What extra edge gives me is we just talked about it. Your physical nature gains you an edge of one in both speed and might rather than one or the other. So now my might edge is also one. So in that example of trying to knock down the door, that level of effort to reduce the difficulty level by one would have only cost me two of my might pool instead of three. Uh, so that's, uh, let's see, one, two. And then I'm going to choose control the field. Now, choose quick draw and quick draw for two speed points. After using a thrown light weapon, you draw another light weapon and make another thrown attack against the same target or a different one. Uh, cool. So that quick draw is pretty cool. And then I think I'm going to choose pierce. I'll write it here. And what Pierce does is for one speed point from my speed pool, um, this is a well-aimed penetrating ranged attack. You make an attack and inflict one additional point of damage if your weapon has a sharp point. Awesome. So I think that's what I'm going to do. So I've chosen those four first tier, Practice and Armor, Extra Edge, Quick Draw, and Pierce. So that's really cool. And I'm um, going to go ahead and see what is next. So that is everything that being a warrior gives me uh, other than the fact that if you look at this chart right here, this chart is what's called a background chart. Again, Cypher system just as a normal part of making your character assists your players in giving your character some character. So this little chart here um, is you can randomly roll it or you could pick it. You have 20 choices. And since I conveniently have a D20 here, I'm just going to roll on the chart and 14. So 14 says you and a friend both smoke the same kind of rare, expensive tobacco. The two of you get together weekly to chat and smoke. Awesome. So that gives my character a little something. I would write that down on the back of the character sheet under uh, backgrounds next to the reason I um, uh, joined the party. And instantaneously, my character has a little more something going on than I am an orphan who works alone. So, so 
<laughs> uh, my, my character has a little a little bit of extra something. Now, the last part, and I'm going to wrap this up here fairly, uh, try to wrap this up a little more quickly. Um, so now Creed is an exiled or Lonos warrior who, the last part is what they call focus. So the adjective noun verb, the verb uh, in the sentence is your focus. And so your descriptor, the adjective tells you what's unique about your character. Um, the type or noun tells um, tells you what, basically what you do in the world. And your um, verb tells you how you do it or your character's focus tells you how you do it. Just like the descriptor, there are approximately, I have to say, 50 to 75 different focuses in the game. Now, because Cypher System is a multi-genre system, these 75 focuses or so are not always available to you. So, for example, um, one of the focuses in the game is uh, Fuse's Mind and Machine. So I don't think that in a fantasy setting, Fuse's mind with machine would be appropriate uh, for, uh, say, fantasy. So when you are doing a, a particular setting, they give you a little campaign sheet here. I'll show you that really quickly. And what the GM can do is go through and mark all of the focuses that make sense for your particular setting. So what I want to do with Creed is I think I want to have him control beasts. So he is an exile. His tribe has been shunned by the other tribes. They live, in, they live in the wilderness. They live off of the land away from the other tribes because they've been pushed away for whatever reason. That hasn't been determined. But they live off of the land and I can see Creed being... Uh, a powerful uh, Lonos warrior who interacts with the wild beasts of the of the wilderness. So I'm going to go ahead and look up controls. That's one of the one of the focuses that you can select. Um, Let's see, controls beasts. That should be coming up. Consorts with the dead. Controls beasts, uh, right here. So that is the focus that I want to choose for Creed. Controls beasts. Uh, to say that you have a way with animals and non-human creatures doesn't begin to cover it. Your mastery in communication with beasts is positively uncanny. They come to you fearlessly, and it's not uncommon for birds to a light on your shoulder or for small animals to climb up uh, your arms or legs. You probably wear tough clothing and have a, a disheveled or grizzled appearance that suggests a rugged outdoor life. Perhaps you even smell like an animal. Uh, and now uh, as part of my foci or focus, the um, again, it gives your character some connection to the world and it's actually called connection and it says choose from the following and just like your descriptor it gives you four choices here I'll read them really quickly and make my own choice it says uh, pick one other PC that character seems to disturb your creatures in a way that you can't explain you know that you must keep your animals away from him if possible or you might lose control of them uh, or two, pick one other PC. The creature that you're bonded with seems to have a special bond with that other person as well. You must decide whether it brings up feelings of jealousy or camaraderie within you and whether to thwart the connection or help it blossom. Or three, pick one other PC. Recently, he accidentally or perhaps intentionally put your beast companion in a position of danger. Your companion is now nervous around him and you are struggling with your own emotional response to the incident. Or four, pick one other PC. Uh, she dislikes beasts of, of all kinds, seeing them as little uh, more than food or prey. You hope that 
exposing her to your beast companion will change her mind. It's up to that player how her character responds to the experience. So what I would pick would be... Um, let's see... Let's just say that, number one, pick one other PC. The character seems to disturb your creatures in a way that you can't explain. Uh, you know that you must keep your animals away from him or her if possible, and you, or you might lose control of them. So that's what I would do. I would choose that one, write that on my character sheet, and that gives me a connection with one of the other players in the group. So part of the player process, part of building the senses of adjective, noun, who verbs, at every point in the process, you get a connection to the first adventure, you get a connection to the party, and you get uh, out with the world, and you get a connection to a particular party member. I really love that, so I love that, so I'll control, controls beasts. I'll write that down here. And then, uh, what it says here is additional equipment. You have three days worth of food for your beast companion, plus a harness, collar, or similar accoutrements. Um, and it says here, tier one, beast companion, um, a level two creature of your size or smaller accompanies you and follows your instructions. You and the GM must work out the details of your creature and you'll probably make roles for it in combat or when it takes actions. The beast companion acts on your turn. Its movement is based on its creature type, avion, swimmer, and so on. If the a uh, beast companion dies, you can hunt in the wild for 1d6 days to find a new companion enabler. So I would probably say, if I could, I would probably say that this was some type of small cat, like a, um, like a jaguar or some type of mountain lion, uh, small mountain lion that accompanies me. Not a big cat like a tiger or a lion. But like a small mountain lion, lion, jaguar or panther, maybe a panther would be cool. And that would be my uh, my level two companion. And I would write that down. And that would be that is everything. And as I go up in tiers um, or levels, as most other games call it. My link to the creature becomes stronger at like um, at level two, I get better communication at level um, three, a level three creature serves me as a mount. So I get another creature that I can actually use uh, as a mount. So that is the process of creating a character in the Cypher system uh, role playing game. I really love the character. I really love the process. Of course, you would uh, purchase your equipment and then you'd be ready to go. So that was about 30 minutes or less because, uh, of course, I'm, I'm talking here. I wouldn't have to do so much talking if I wasn't trying to present the character creation process there. Like, if I'm making a character, it's if you know what you want, if you're used to the Cypher system, that's what I love about the system. It's so quick. It's so easy. It gives uh, your, your character some background and some connection. And I always love role-playing games that do that. So that's Creed, a exiled warrior who controls beasts really awesome thanks for uh checking out this episode of confessions of a frustrated game master uh good morning good afternoon good evening wherever or where whenever uh you're watching this thanks